Welcome to Bastion Land Broadcasting, where tonight we are leaving the comforts and modernity of Bastion. We are heading into deep country, the long shadow of our embarrassing past, where people eat the potato cold from the ground and the trains don't run because there's leaves on the line. So this should be cheery and uh, enjoyable. Uh, I did a Twitter poll earlier today um, with the asking about the sort of climate for this area because deep country. I mean, I'm going to dive right into it. So let's go over to the uh, let's go over to our page. Every week I learn something new about this streaming art, as you can tell by the fact that it's become so incredibly smooth. And this week, the thing that I've learned after many weeks of forcing people to listen to this noise over and over again is I don't need to slam the keyboard shortcuts for my scene transitions. Like you can just press it and it'll do it. And also it doesn't have a massively unpleasant noise blasting out of the mic, uh, into the mic and out of your speakers or headphones. So that's what we're doing. We're going to be enjoying less clickety clack noises today until I forget about it. So deep country, um, like I said, deep country is in every way a contrast to Bastion. And despite that, prepping for deep country is kind of the same process as prepping for Bastion itself. So what we're going to do is I'm going to dive straight into it this week because I, a couple of weeks ago I did a video on how to create a borough of Bastion. But this week we're going to do the same. I'm going to I'm going to do it in slightly less detail. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do more quality, less quantity because that borough of Bastion that we created, um, I can probably even find the borough for you now. Actually, uh, that borough that we created was. Um, was kind of broad strokes, which is which is good. It's how I tend to sort of prep things anyway. So it's quite authentic, if you like. Uh, but there were lots of items on here. So I feel like I spent most of the sort of the runtime of the stream just kind of filling in these, these points of interest and these areas in between. So what I'm gonna do this week is I'm gonna have slightly fewer points on the map than I would normally have but we're going to go into them in a little bit more detail and talk about some of the prep beyond just putting things on a map because that's perfectly good. I could run a game with that, but we're going to talk about if I want to have a bit more of a detailed, um, detailed set of prep. So deep country. Things were better before, things are simplistic and everything is inconvenient. These are the three things we're going to be remembering and we've got our um, precious spark table here, which is going to be giving us all sorts of ideas for what to put in deep country. A couple of things to remember. Um, and it's been a while since I've del delved into the book, to be honest, since we stopped doing the deep dives, I've, um, I've been working on other games and sort of other ideas. So it's interesting to come back to this. I feel like I, because I've just been immersed in electric bastion for like years. It feels weird to have not looked at it for a, for a few weeks and now I'm coming back to it. So it's it's a nice feeling, but I feel like I've forgotten everything. So villages are usually built around something. That's useful. A bridge, church, ruin, heap. And they're normally self-sufficient. Um, there are failed cities, but they're always in decline. And all types of wilderness are found out here as well. Routes are established, but inconvenient. And there's always something just off the beaten path. And aliens and machines that find their way out here are equally likely to be seen as gods or monsters. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow this procedure for mapping deep country. And we're just going to go through it one step at a time. Um, take what, let's, do, let's do a little full screen action so you can see what I'm looking at. There we go. 
Hmm. No, he does not like this. No, we will not be going full screen because it decides to go very strange with my monitor. So what we're going to do is we're just going to follow it one step at a time because the whole point of this is it's procedural. Um, gives you a structure so that you're coming into this even though you've got a blank slate. It's just one step at a time. So we have our blank slate here, deep country. And let's just go one step at a time. So the vast spaces of deep country are best traveled by established paths and so can be mapped using route mapping similar to Bastion with the following special considerations. Write as many good notes directly onto the map as you can manage, keeping only overflow information on a separate sheet. So yeah, we're gonna try and see how much we can fit on one sheet of paper or rather one, one, mon one monitor display in this case. So routes, using different colors, draw two bending lines that cross each other. So in Bastion, it was loops which kind of fits the idea of a city more. Whereas out here, if you're going somewhere, I always think that rural routes are more like roads between two points. That's 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 nonsensical. But what I mean is with a, with a city, a circuit feels a bit more right. I'm not making sense tonight. We're gonna, we're gonna do what we can with the way my brain is feeling tonight. Right, so. Two different routes uh let's have a green route oh yeah so i didn't actually say about the twitter poll so i asked people what sort of environment we should have because the thing with deep country is in many ways it's a bit well it's a lot more varied than bastion so whereas everybody's bastion is going to be different once you've kind of established your feel of bastion it does have certain things that are kind of unified, even though all the boroughs are very different by design. And two of them might feel like parts of entirely different cities. You tend to find that one person's version of Bastion does have unifying factors, whereas Deep Country, sort of each section of Deep Country can be completely alien to the other because they might not have any relationship with each other at all because it's kind of essentially infinite. And there's the idea that the further away from Bastion you go, it's like going backwards in time. There's the idea that every possible, you know, biome exists out here. So you could have a very sort of bordering on modern desert environment. You could have a medieval kind of forest environment. You could have like polar wastes that are more like prehistoric. But what you're actually going to get today, the two words that won in the poll were um wet well i did i did wet and dry and hot and cold and wet was far and away the most popular choice i won't investigate that too much and then we had dry but we're not going to have wet and dry so after that it was cold so we're going to have somewhere that is very wet and a bit cold so it does sound like i'm just describing england right now at the window that's basically what i can see but I don't want to just like create a bit of English countryside. I want to be a bit different. So we, I was thinking if it's going to be cold and wet, you know, it's easy to think of deep country as open, open plains because it's so big, but there is coastline here. So we're going to go for a kind of cold coastal, maybe kind of going for a little bit of kind of a um, fjord style environment that kind of scandinavian coastal nordic feel um that's not an area i've been to so i'm not gonna have any sense of how to recreate it authentically we're just gonna do what we can so let's do our two routes so let's do um two curving routes wasn't it so let's go there 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 hang on was it curving or branching two bending lines that cross each other. So there's our first line. No, nope, let's not do that. There we go, our first line, done. And then our second line, we've done red. Let's, oh, come on now, behave. Right, so we've got our first line. And then our second line is gonna be this, I can't bring myself to have that full on magenta, it's gonna burn my eyes. Let's have this, let's have a bit more of a dull red. Um, 
So again, it's going to cross each other. Let's go there, there, down through here, and then back through here, and down here. Oh no, one too many again. There we go. So we have this as kind of our loose shape to begin with. Um, so add at least two branches off each in different colors as you wish. So at least two branches off each. So that's another change. So what I'll do is I'm gonna do one branch of the same color. So I'll do one extra branch here in red going like down here and then we'll do a branch of this one over here in green let's do it from here and let's make it green and then we'll do not a pro in this design software, I will confess. So then we'll do a, a branch of a different color on each one. So let's deselect that before I change the color like an idiot. Okay, and uh, so we've got green, we've got red, let's have a blue. Um, we'll have this blue one coming off up here, I think. Yeah, I don't really like these being quite so close together, so. Let's have it down here instead. And then off the red, we're going to have um, a lovely yellow. Why not? Um, yeah, let, let's, let's keep it on this one. Yeah, there we go. Now, no, let's, let's, let's. Come on, cooperate with me now. Now, I'm not gonna stand for things like this. I'm just not gonna have it. So we're gonna make these connect because even though we're going to deep country, we're having a bastion level of attention to detail here. There we go. I'm not, not crazy about this. So let's pop you back to the back. There we go. Look at that, lovely. Now that looks awful. Um, <laughs> I think this one is harder to make look good because you've got these curves. It's harder to make it look like a good map. Not that the Bastion one looked like a good map. Um, like within an hour of me posting the video of how to create a Borough for Bastion, there were like people making ones that looked incredible, um, which was my plan all along. I didn't want to hog the spotlight of the, the visual design. Um, but yeah, some people posted some amazing stuff. So I'm expecting people to see some good deep country maps as well tonight. So what's next? Label each different color as a trail, railway, river, or other type of route. Right, people, give me some ideas for routes that could be passing through deep country. We are in a kind of Nordic, fjordy, cold, rainy misty coastal bitter gray part of deep country i think um you know this, this could be connections between islands if you want to go really off piece with it um but i'm going to come up with two and then i'm going to pick two from the chat so uh Let's label this one first, the red. I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm just gonna say the red is like a, no, the green can be like a forest trail. Trail through the forest. We'll put them down here today. Forest train, forest trail. We're gonna have uh, a Drakkar tram line. Do I, do I know what a Drakkar tram line is? I'm assuming this is some kind of like specialist um, tram that's used in like in Scandinavia. 
listen, Drakkar tram is not bringing me up many interesting images. I'm getting trams. Um, I'm getting trams and like a boat. And I, I may well have typed it in wrong. So we're going to do... Yeah, we're going to call it like a rowing tram. Yeah. And uh, like Captain Lucky Luke says, passengers must row and sail it and pay with pillage. Rowing tram works for me. Um, Elliot Salmon says ski paths. You know, we'll, we'll take ski paths and we'll take... Um, Astral Disasters makes a reference that I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm familiar with the work, but I don't know it. Um, canoe trip. So I'm just going to put like canoe. Uh, canoe. Yeah, canoe. Canoe trip. Canoe trail. Canoe trail. Okay, cool. So let's actually uh, put these colours in. So no, let's not do that. Right, so um, the yellow one, I think yellow can be our, I quite like yellow as the ski path for some reason. Let's put it on this side, shall we? Yeah, we're, we're ruining our attempt at graphic design here. There we go. And then the rowing tram, I quite like the tram The rowing tram being blue because I'm thinking of it as like a it's just quite a straightforward one-way trip so that's that one oh, this this is not it is not my day for design today so that one is obviously gonna be blue uh, the forest trail naturally feels like it should be green you know it's obvious but I'm gonna I'm gonna take it today that is our forest trail and finally our canoe trail by by process of elimination I'm gonna I'm gonna scream at this computer before the night is through I'm aware that it's me making these mistakes when I blame the computer Rest assured, I know where the blame lies, and it's squarely with me. Um, canoe trail is red, so that's a big canoe trail. So I'm maybe thinking this could be like almost like a canoe down the coast. And then we've got like a little bit that juts out here. Maybe this is like um, archipelago. So this route thing, you, you can use this in the game, but if you want to like create like a kind of more dare I say diegetic map that sort of is like a physical geography map you can still do that but I would just do this first because those connections are kind of the key thing that you need in the game okay um, so we've done our routes and our paths um, next place a dot at each point where routes cross branch bend or end and then we're going to name each one after a landmark, such as a ruin, village, or natural feature. Note the immediate features with hidden details in parentheses. So, like I said, I'm not going to do as many as I normally would here because I want to get on to some other, other factors. So let's just have... Let's get our little... Little... Um, Thing ready. There you go, that's going to be our stop. So we're going to just put one at like the end of each route for now and each branch. It's still going to be quite a lot, you know. So at all the ends. Of all your routes, all of your connections, and then ordinarily, if I was doing this myself, to be honest, that's quite a decent amount, you know. 
but I would be tempted to like put one between the sort of the longer stretches. So I might put one here, 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 you know, just to kind of break it up. But you know, that's still one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's still like thirteen um areas of interest that we're gonna put on here. So we're gonna name each one of these after a landmark or point of interest. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna use the tables that are in the book. So let's head over and go back to this spark table that we had up here. I've got my 2D20s ready to go. And I'm just gonna roll them and now I'm gonna get 10 and 11. So the idea with these spark tables, which I'm sure you've heard me talk about before, is it should generate an evocative combination of two words and you can take it as literally as you want or you can just use it as a jumping off point. So if you come up with a good idea and then you think, well, actually that doesn't really match what came up. It doesn't matter. The, the, the end justifies the means here. So it's just a way of getting ideas. It's a spark table. So it's, that's why some of these words on here, that they're not necessarily great at filling out details themselves, but they spark questions and they spark ideas. I can see we've already got an incredible combination for our first one. Horse is a word that will come up time and time again. A personal favorite. I don't know why. I don't have any like affection for horses in real life, really. But give me an RPG horse, a weird horse. And I think they're just funny. I don't know why. Um, so we had horse funeral is our first waypoint. So horse funeral, it could be a village, it could be a natural feature. The obvious thing seems to be that it would be like a um, memorial to a horse or perhaps all horses, like Tomb of the Unknown Horse. Um, and I'm thinking this could be at like, the end of one of the paths, like this is like a place of pilgr pilgrimage for people to honor horses. Um, It seems like it would make sense for it to be end of the forest trail because you know you're going to take your horse with you, aren't you? So we're going to put here uh, whoa, 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 whoa! Let's let's not let's not go crazy. Let's not give me not give me more trouble. So. To anyone who like uses this software regularly, it must be absolutely painful watching here. So a uh, memorial for all horses is the name of this place. And yes, you could, you could put this, you could put some more details here in parentheses, uh, but I think that's fine for what we're doing tonight. So we're going to leave that there. I'm going to go back to the spark table. I'm going to roll another 2d6. I get 5 and 16. <clears throat> rock idol. See, rock idol has two very different meanings. Um, the idea of an idol as just a physical object is a bit boring. I do like the idea that it's like a rock idol, like a, like a rock star. Um, perhaps who's retired out to deep country or maybe several of them have retired and it's like an aging aging musician's retirement home um and of course it would be at the end of the ski path because they're a bunch of wealthy old i'm just imagining like the rolling stones in a retirement home um so i'm going to call this the um hellraiser retirement lodge so maybe not like necessarily full on like rock stars, but like maybe like activists and like loud personalities, people who used to be like the youth of their day that are now retired and they're coming out here to ski. Cool. Let's do another roll. 14, 16. Mountain Idol 
magnificent. Don't like that. 12 and 2. Feast Hunt. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Astral Disaster says Hellraiser Retirement Lodge. Center Heights as Carers. Yeah, that, it has a very different meaning if you go down that route. Um, so, what, what did I just roll? I've already forgotten. Um, what was it? Feast. It was Feast and Hunt. Okay, so there's, there's a very obvious way to go here with like a village that has like a hunting um, culture. That's like celebrating a feast. Um, I think even though it's a little bit obvious, we're going to go for like whale hunters. And if I ever hit something like this, and I'm like, that's too obvious, but it's something that's evocative. What I'm going to, what I tend to do is I tend to write it down and then often I'll come back to it at the end and think, right, what can I add to this as like some spice to make it more interesting? Um, and one thing I might do is just change up the, like give it a, a fresh coat of paint and you'd be surprised how often it works. If I call it land whale hunters, I can have everything that I wanted to have with whale hunters, but they're hunting land whales, presumably, which are like land sharks, but bigger and maybe less vicious. Whale hunter hunters says, uh, Odd Geller, you know what? I like that even better. I'm stealing it. Whale hunter hunters. I don't know where the hyphen should go in this situation. I'm thinking here. Whale hunter hunters. Yeah. So they hunt the whale hunters. That's even better than my stupid land whale idea. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Um, 19 and 9. Milk, milk burning. Okay. Um, so with deep country. It's very easy to slip into the because one of the things about deep country is um as it says here people have been everywhere but maybe not for a long time um so this is something that people have queried with me before and they've said well look if people have already been here there's no like there's no big wild wilderness out here to explore but i think it's more interesting if you have those you can still have those big that, that you know that if you look at Earth, you could probably say that humans have been most places on Earth and different cultures live in wildly different uh, environments on Earth. So you could say people have been everywhere and there are signs of humanity everywhere, but there are still vast bits of it that appear as wilderness. Um, so don't take this too literally that like every patch of ground is now concrete. All it means is anywhere you go, you're going to find little dots of maybe just remnants of people having been there before so in this case uh milk and burning it's just going to be like a uh like a burned up dairy so maybe it was like so maybe it was like a the, the dairy farm was somehow like blasphemous so we're just going to call it foul no foul has there's a better word than that foul here um I'm just going to call it strange dairy and then in the details burnt to the ground so whatever was happening there whatever strange creatures they were milking it's now been burnt to the ground but the trail is still there um, and you know what because that's a bit of a it's not exactly a destination I'm going to put that at a, um, at a branch here because it, it's good to put like good stuff at the end of it as, as good as things get out here in deep country um right let's keep going 18 and 8 tree tree devil so i think in oh, i always get rifts and like cinnabar mixed up as my ridiculous I think they were early 90s RPGs. Um, if you haven't seen either of these games, do yourself a favour and check them out. I wouldn't recommend buying them. 
but if you have a friend who has the book perhaps or you want to look at a read through that somebody has done um, they are fascinating artifacts um, inspiration in some ways and you might think that's a strange thing to say about these games which are largely derided as being a mess but I'm going on a tangent but I think in Cinnabar someone in the chat might be able to correct me if we've got any Cinnabar fans in the house uh, I think weren't there like tree devils which were like these little koala guys and they were actually like really vicious fighters they were kind of like um like if they did like a gritty reboot of Ewoks and they wanted to make them like badass they were kind of like that so I'm just gonna steal that directly drop bears yeah kind of like the idea of drop bears um you know this is this is gonna bug me enough that I am gonna look this up um but I like the idea of having ah so you can see my train of thought here my first thought was have like these I think I didn't want to have just like Ewoks um but um but in Bastionland we have um we have a couple of options we could make them aliens but that's not great I like just using animals so just making them actual koalas but like vicious koalas could be fun but it's also a little bit close to just like the drop bears meme um and instead we have mockeries so let's say um mock koala militia like yeah mock koala militia i mean that's kind of not really a location yeah they've got a village um and i'm going to put that right on one of these routes because i want this to be something that they've run into mock koala mercenary barracks so it's not just that they're out there like being bandits these are you can hire them if you can find them and you can afford them you can hire them um mock koala mercenary barracks done so they're like gorilla <laughs> if i call them like gorilla soldiers you're gonna think it's mock gorillas but no okay you get the idea it's stupid but it's going in right we got six and nine lost burning they, they love the burning out here so i'm going to flip it around six and nine so nine and six blood travelers so i think i like putting in here is like a word that i ever use is like pilgrims because it just it comes with like motion and purpose already established so if we did have like blood pilgrims where would they be headed to like some kind of blood shrine but that's a little bit basic for my liking um what would blood pilgrims be going to do hmm, this is a coffee job bear with me you know when you start to drink your coffee and you realize it is just on the edge of a little bit too cold and it's not going to get any better yeah blood transfusion pilgrims astral disasters suggests so like they go to a village and then they all like share their blood somehow yeah well we don't need to come up with all the details tonight so we're going to call them blood trans transfusion is a little bit technical for like deep country talk i think so we're going to call them uh, blood trading post okay yeah blood trading post so it's like it's the end of a end of the rowing tram apparently so maybe you can buy and sell things for blood so it's like you go there because you you know you're healthy but you've not got much money and they will like drain you of like some blood just just enough like you would when you go to give blood um just so you're a little bit 
a little bit delicate afterwards, but you get something good as a result of it. Yeah, I like it. Right, let's keep going. Hang on, how many, how many have we got left? Because we're going to mix it up a bit. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. We're, we're less than halfway. Let's pick the pace up. Seven and six. Bird travellers. Um, birds and travellers. This, this should clearly, yeah, birds and travellers. Hmm, 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 hmm. Um, again, there's a lot of very obvious ones here. Bear with me. Yeah, there's a lot of very obvious ones here that we could do, like traveling by bird. Um, so let's see if I can pass it a bit further. So, okay, so ideas that spring to mind with birds and travelers. We're in a cold, wet environment, which I've up to now been neglecting. So it's gonna be penguins and travelers, it's gonna be like tourists. So this is like a tourist trap, like a penguin colony. Um, and I'm gonna make it a mock penguin colony. So these are like mock penguins that have come in and like evicted the real penguins that live there. And they just like frolic around and charge tourists money to come and see them. So <laughs> this should obviously be at the end of one of these paths, at the end of this canoe trail. Um, mock penguin tourist trap. And it's like, get your photo taken with a, with an adorable penguin. So this is the thing with deep country. You can go different ways with it. So the ideas that we're coming up with, to me, all these things kind of suggest that we're still like somewhat near to Bastion. So far enough away that we're in deep country. But we're not like so far out that we've got like people that have never heard of Bastion. Like you can maybe see the smoke on the horizon of Bastion. And um, you've got people here that have maybe left Bastion for deep country, like at the, at the retirement lodge. So we're on that kind of fringe here. We're not into deep, deep country. Right, uh, we're gonna switch now because I've had enough of this table. And luckily for me, when you reach that point, you've got another table to go to, which is well, you've got two options really. You can just go straight into these uh, pre-made encounter tables if you wanna you take some inspiration from there. Um, you've got your horses, which are an essential part of deep country, but then you also have these ones here. So for deep country especially, this one here is really useful. So you've just got like an outright place generator really. So this is like super useful for exactly like this. So if I just roll 2d20 straight away, I get 16 and three. So um, our landmark is a boulder and it's surrounded by dead woods. So we're gonna just straight up call it the boulder of death. Because why mess around? And the thing that I'm starting to think about this region, I think it, the, the whole I, the whole the fact that we've got a tourist trap and like a retirement lodge and a canoe trail and all this stuff it kind of reminds me of like weirdly even though the um even though the climate is all wrong it's got like a weird kind of route 66 vibe to it like it's um like people would come out here from bastion and like travel around um trying to like see the sights and have like a, a have a road trip out here and like yeah you've got to go see the boulder of death like they say it landed in these woods and it killed everything in the woods and there used to be a strange dairy but it got burnt to the ground and you can go skiing and you can go canoeing so it's kind of like it's already like taken a turn that i wouldn't have expected if you just told me to describe an area of deep country like i was imagining like a really desolate bleak nordic coastal thing and we can still go for some of that but we've also got this weird route 66 vibe going on so let's do one more of this side 
um, that is 15 and 18. Oh, so it's a lighthouse surrounded by white beaches. So we've got like a kind of beauty spot. So what's the twist on this lighthouse? Come on, chat, help me out. An obvious thing would be like, it's a, like a stretch of ocean that maybe connects to like the living stars. So it's like a cosmic lighthouse. And again, you could just, you could take that in a very weird um, supernatural way, or it could just be that it's some, some, some people like painted a lighthouse in psychedelic colors and fitted a weird strobe to it that gives people hallucinations. And everyone goes and has like this weird spiritual experience in this lighthouse. I like that. It's the, watch me fail to spell this word. Psychedelic lighthouse. Is that gonna, is it, is it, is it even checking my spelling for me? Uh, yes, let's please check spelling. Yeah, there we go. Close. Close, but no cigar. Doesn't like, doesn't like Hellraiser? Come on. Okay. So we've got psychedel like, psychedelic lighthouse. And again, this, this is our like coastal corner, I guess. Um, what have we got left? We've got one, two, three points of interest left to do. So for these three, yeah, Odd Gellert says, if it's Route 66, get a world's biggest something or other in there. Road tri roadside attraction style. I think we should. One of these is going to be the world's biggest something. Um, so on the other side of this tape, this spread, you know, we, we're going to do the local flag because I'm a big flag nerd. So the flag for this region of deep country, if you don't yet have a name for, if someone has a name in chat, that would be fantastic. Uh, the colours are 13 gold and black. Um, so I'm imagining that as gold on black and 20 snake. So it's a gold snake on a black background. That's quite a sinister looking uh, flag for our, our sort of county here. Um, but we also have these touchstones. So these are, these are often used for like a character. So if you're talking, if you've got a character that the uh, players bump into and you want them to have opinions about something, this is like hot topics of the day. So if I roll and I get a seven and a four, um, stagnation is the sort of overall theme. And four specifically means that problem, problems have been left to fester. So whatever's going on here, it's left that, it's that way because it's just been left to, to happen. And then somebody else might have six and one. So wildness is a, a general theme. And it could be that it's animal attacks. I like this animal attacks thing quite a lot. I also like left to fest. If I take a combination of these two things, if I think about an animal attack that might occur because something has been left to fester, I think about like stories of like, um, I, I, th I think I, I forget which animal, but there's certain types of animal where um, you hear that they will just keep on growing forever until they until they die, and they will essentially live forever until they they don't die of natural causes basically they die because they get so old and so big that they they're like easy prey um i'm thinking like lobsters uh, and, and crocodiles so both of those are good candidates for the world's biggest thing um world's biggest crocodile or world's biggest lobster um hmm Let's do crocodile. No, it's a little bit, little bit cliche. Yeah, why not both? Fine, okay. They're like a, they're like a, a buddy. No, yeah, yeah, crocster or or lo lobadal. Um, hybrid is good, but what about just like they just share the same lake? So, if this is tourist trap material, it's going to be up here world's biggest lobster and croc 
So whoever runs this, maybe they're like collecting the world's biggest animals. So they've got two. But if you could like bring them another one and expand their operation, that's 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 a job right there. Okay, so um, that's our animal attacks, and then we're gonna roll again. We're getting three and four. Um, history storytelling. Let's have here um, like a storyteller camp. So obviously, because this is our like tourist area, it's going to be full of people that have been out here traveling and now they think they know it all. So they're telling really smug stories about places they've been and it's going to be unbearable. And then our last one, our last touchstone is, uh, oh no, five and three, bad medicine. Hmm. Bad medicine. So the obvious thing to do is just have like some like really rubbish country medicine, but that feels a little bit weak to me. Um, I think we could we could do better than that. Um, I'm thinking of going like a step further, and it's not necessarily medicine in the traditional sense, but maybe it's like a oh, what's it called? Not quite like a rehab facility, but like a detox, yeah. Detox, mm, detox resort. And the twist to it is, um, why would it be bad? Hmm. Yeah, a hag's hut, like Captain Lucky Luke says, that's like, that's solid. Um, cryotherapy hospitals yeah so let's just mix all of these things together cryotherapy hags so i reckon what happened is they used to be your classic like three witches here that lived in like a hut like full-on like discworld fairy tale witches and as times have moved on and people have moved out from deep country now that the their main Mar their main market is now tourists it's not enough for them to just be selling like eye of newton stuff so they've imported a little bit of bastion technology so they can do the cryotherapy but they've still maintained their kind of hag flavor so you get in like a combination of like weird high-tech witchery and there we go that is our deep country borough and um, well no it's not that's that's a clear lie because we are nowhere near finished because we've got complications so for each path in between points detail a flavorful complication when passing through they can be simple like overgrown plants or a collapsed bridge or they can be complex like a lengthy guided trail or a maze of tunnels through a mountain they should always reflect the character of this part of deep country so this is where we're going to get in our wet and cold thing and i want it to just be you can go in many directions with this. You can have this be almost like your encounter table, but I'm just going to make this part of the kind of grind of traveling through deep country. So here the complications are going to be mostly kind of environmental. So ski path uh, complications. Let's do these in a slightly different color just for simplicity. So our complication here is um, frozen, frozen over snow. So it's a ski path, but it's like, again, I'm not a skier, but it's like skiing on ice down here. And then this blue one is the rowing tram. So we're just going to have... Uh, sunken tram so the tram here is just like gone like it sank so if you want to go to the blood trading post it's it's, it's become isolated now so sometimes a complication can be a full-on like a full-on like dead end almost um and then for the 
canoe trail. We're just going to have like various like horrible things to do with going down the river. So ice flow. Is that how you spell it? And I remember it being spelled a weird way. Uh, to get to the boulder um, between the dairy and the boulder so we've got dead woods so we're just gonna have like um, <laughs> I like the idea that if it's dead woods there's gonna be lots of trees around uh, there's just gonna be like a beaver dam but what's the twist we're not gonna make it mock beavers because we've had a lot of mockeries we're just gonna make them um, <laughs> gonna make them bad beavers and you can work out what exactly that means like if this was D, &D we'd, we'd put dire beaver but that's that's already like hilarious bad beavers gotta get past them oh we, we missed a point ah right okay let's let's super quick fill in that point because this won't do 11 and 8 old devil <laughs> so who's who's the old devil down here um You know what? I often like to put two of the same thing. Let's just have rival retirement lodges. So this is the old devil retirement lodge and that's the Hellraiser retirement lodge and obviously they're not going to get along. And you're going to have old, old aging rock stars fighting on ice which is already like, that's, that's ripe. You don't need any more from me on that. Um, so we've got some more more water things here so let's just have like obviously like rapids is an easy way to go here maybe the rapids go away and you've just got like well we'll just put a waterfall why not and yeah it'd be good to know which way the waterfall goes but we'll we'll deal with that when we get to it um, and then between here and here, our last bit of water is just going to be like, um, if I just put sludge water, that's like industrial waste from Bastion, maybe washing up the river. Cool. Um, and then our forest trail, it's damp and it's cold. So this is just going to be like, I reckon to get to the whale hunters, you have to go through like a bog like a marsh boggy marsh is like the most redundant thing i've ever written i'm just gonna put stink marsh um i'm not gonna fill in all these because it's gonna make it look a bit cluttered um to get to the memorial for all horses it's it's like a, a mountain trail so it's not just that you're going through the woods now you're having to like climb up up the mountain to get to the detox resort um so what would be around the hags Um, maybe there's like, hmm, like rejected hag familiars. So like they're all pets that they got rid of. I like just roaming here, causing mischief. And there you go. So there should technically be one here. On we're just missing two, aren't we? Let Let's see if I can fit them in. So if in doubt, in a forest evil trees and between the koala mercenaries and the world's biggest lobster and croc um i'm just gonna this is like um i mean you, you can just have that it's like an overgrown trail so the, the trail here doesn't really exist you're gonna have to kind of go through the woods Look, look at this mess here we, we, we can't have this i'm gonna need like a single word complication for this um three gnomes in a brigand suit lord black fang i don't know about that brigands is a little bit retro in fact i'm just gonna go with retro brigands so maybe like some of these like travel traveler gap year people that came out here i'm so ashamed of this one i'm just going to make it smaller 
Um, maybe they're like... They tried being like thieves in Bastion, but it was too hard. With all the modern technology that was available uh, to deter them. So they're like, well, forget this. We'll go out to Deep Country and we're going to be like old-fashioned Robin Hood brigands. So yeah, imitation retro brigands here. There we go. So that is the groundwork. Now, do you remember when I said I was going to just do this quickly so that I had more time to go through the details? Well, we've been on more, almost an hour. Um, I'm going to do a couple of details uh, really quickly. Um, but before I do, let's just make sure we're finishing this off properly. Uh, so we've got our complications. Oh, we've got, we've got more. So... Connect a few unrelated but nearby landmarks with dotted lines, showing that they are visible slash audible from each other but have no existing route. Then, roughly label the type of environment that lies in the empty spaces between routes. Add a hazard to each patch of art fruit ground, suggesting why there isn't a route there. Okay, so we're not going to get on to the next thing. We're just going to finish this map. And then what I'll do is I'll do another video that's about more detailed prep, maybe using either this one or the bastion land, the bastion borough that we did, and show some more detailed techniques. We'll just finish on this one today. So let's do some dotted lines, which obviously I can remember how to do. Yeah, there we go. Should have never doubted myself. Does that work? That's that's clearly not a dotted line in the way that I want. Yeah, like remember when I said this was going to be painful for those of you who know how to how to use this software. I believe this is going to give me what I want. There we go. There we go. It's all coming back to me now. So the reason why we're connecting these lines is so it has a line of sight or line of um, sound to each other. So this seems like an obvious one. If these are whale hunters and that's a lighthouse, then, you know, they're going to be connected, aren't they? You'll be able to see them. But there's a reason why there's not a path there. And that's why we're going to label this, this patch of ground between them. So why can't you just go that way? What are you sort of crossing through? And the obvious thing to do here is for it to be like rough seas. So we'll take our complication, not that one. And we'll just put rough seas. So yeah, to get between them, you can either brave the rough seas or you can head all the way back through the stink marsh, past the mock koalas and up the sludge water here. Um, I think that the Hellraiser Retirement Lodge should be visible from somewhere. I think from the Storyteller Camp, because, yeah, I like that. Um, I like this being hidden. The memorial for all horses, that's like a natural one that would be visible from somewhere. So we would assume it's visible from the Storyteller Camp, but it's also going to be visible from uh, from the Trading Post. Not like that. There we go. So it's going to be visible from there. Um, it's tricky because because there's so few points here. Normally you'd have like points here being visible from each other. But there we go. Let's let's say that these two are also visible. Let's say that these two are also visible from each other. Your penguin, tourist trap, and your boulder of death. And then. I'm going to do this a different colour because this is kind of our, our, you know, what is, what's in this area declaration. So we'll make this one bring out the pink, purple at least. So there's rough seas here. Then you kind of look for like your other areas between. So figure we've got one up here so what's between the tourist trap and the 
you know, it's just gonna be this clearly like jagged rocks. It doesn't have to be super fancy or evocative here. I mean, if you can do that, then more power to you. The fact that this is a ski route and you've got a waterfall, this suggests to me mountains. Then we'll just do this one here. So here you've got like evil trees, hags, the trading post. I think this is just going to be like misty woods. And then we're kind of missing this bit here. So the fact that we've got, we've got like rapids, a dam. This is suggesting more of like um, a valley to me. Or like a, you know what, I'm going to take the Misty for this one. So Misty Valley is good. And then for these woods, we're just going to make them dense woods instead. There we go. And then we're going to call it. Travelers County because they've cashed in on their tourist trade and it's now called Travelers County to appeal to uh, traveling tourists to come out and visit and there we go you've got deep country ready to run and then deep water is kind of the same if you like um, obviously it's based around islands And like shipping routes more than uh more than deep country but it, it's a very similar idea and yeah i think that kind of gives you at least an idea of how to map deep country um i will be posting this beauty on twitter shortly and i'm looking forward to seeing how everybody else gets on creating their own uh their own county of deep country and next week well, actually, a couple of things. Let's uh, let's put this to bed. A couple of bits of um, housekeeping. I have two things that I'm going to be linking you to. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube, the links will be in the comments. If you are watching this now live and you can see me frantically getting the links that I forgot to prepare ahead of time. Um, there we go. I've got a couple of little announcements to make. So first of all, I mentioned on last week's stream, Electric Bastion Land has miraculously been nominated for best writing at the Ennies in 2020. Um, and while there will not be a Gen Con this year happening in Indianapolis, there will be a, I believe, like an online award ceremony. And I don't know how they're gonna do it, but if you want to see me struggle to accept an award, then by all means, um, please come and uh, vote for Electric Bastion Land. And I'll be posting the, um, <laughs> the link for how to vote. Um, in the chat momentarily. Weirdly, the, the, the Ennies website is an absolute mess. I get some extremely alarming pop-ups coming from there, but the voting page at least is safe. So if you would like to vote for Electric Bastion Land uh, for best writing at the Ennies, there is the link. I will wait while you go and do that now. Um, when you're voting, you put the you you pick the um, the entry that you want to vote for most, and you give that a score of one, symbolising that it is your number one choice. I didn't read this, so I've actually gone and probably cast like the first vote for Electric Bastion Land and given it a five, which is like I've put myself in last place. So somebody needs to like just vote to undo my 
mistaking mis mistaken vote because it doesn't let you go back in and edit it so go and vote for electric bastion and um while you're in there there are lots of other great nominees um Morkborg is going to win everything so don't vote for it for writing i know it's great but it's going to win and um it's, it's going to win all the other categories so go and vote for it in the other categories instead because Morkborg i think is going to be the the one that sweeps things this year um trilemma adventures i don't actually own the final release of that but i've enjoyed those sort of one page dungeons a lot so that's definitely worth worth voting for and who else do i need to who else do i need to mention there's lots i'm not like deliberately leaving anybody out um but i've i've been entirely self self-centered on the endies voting so vote for electric bastion land and the second thing is i don't have i don't have the link for this i assume by like being really unprofessional i'm just showing that writing is really my strength i'm not i'm not nominated for best stream if that's a category um So this really is just showing that I'm a fish out of water here and I, I if you're gonna give me an award it's gonna be for writing um bear with me there we go secondly there is a game jam I sound like such an old man talking about these things I don't fully understand there is a game jam on itch.io where people can contribute hacks content anything they have made for well inspired by or for electric bastion land or into the odd the only thing i can take any real credit for um so this was set up by uh lizard wizard and i've never had to say this name out loud but it's it's the other person that runs the into the odd discord uh yo Chigal. i'm so sorry if you're here um they've basically done the, the hard work on this and they're going to be running it um the only thing i can take any credit for is the name and it is called the eclectic bastion jam and there's the link so go and uh if you the idea is you've got like 30 days to go and create something upload it and then there's not going to be like a winner but i will probably like pick out some of the highlights and talk about them a little bit on the stream uh, so if you've got anything you want to make or anything you have made for electric bastion land or into the odd or inspired by those games share it with people and let's see what people have, have done um and the other announcement is that last week i tried a stream on thursdays i did like a bonus stream um i might try that again this week i met like a weird like crossroads with the stream because i really enjoyed doing it but i want to make sure that it's something that actually people are enjoying <laughs> which, which, which would be ideal uh these kind of prep ses sessions are something that people have asked for and they're enjoyable i'm going to be doing more actual plays in future as well i might do some more stuff around the actual design of games so showing some of the games that i'm working on and kind of the process of designing them um but i did quite enjoy the stream that i did a couple of weeks ago um i think it was by far and away the least popular stream i've ever done <laughs> but when i played through knit stories the pc game and spoke about it a little bit for how it links in with electric bastion and so if i'm going to do stuff like that because i know that was so deeply unpopular i'm going to do that on thursdays instead so we're going to keep the tuesday stream as watch this to get stuff for your rpg game and then thursday is going to be a less regular stream but if i want to do anything relating to like playing a pc game and talking about it and how it links to rpg design i will be doing it then um astral disasters are these jams suitable to first timers yeah i mean there's no there's no prize for winning it and there's no punishment for doing it if it's not amazing like i i it's the kind of thing that i used to really enjoy doing um i, I probably have my hands full too much for it at the minute but i think it's it's just a good exercise to do to try and 
to try and make something on a deadline if that's not if you don't already work to deadlines with this sort of thing it's quite a good motivator i found and it sort of really brings out a different side to me when i'm when i'm writing to a deadline for better or worse so i would say if you've not done this before yes give it a try all the details are on there for what you can do i mean the most obvious thing to do is what we've just spoken about which is you know make your own make your own borough or area of deep country and maybe have a bit more polish than this certainly but um but yeah this would be the obvious thing to do um but yeah i'm looking forward to seeing what people come up with until then it has been a pleasure sharing this experience with you next week i will either be doing like a mapping of the underground or potentially might mix it up with prep that is more based around like creating characters and monsters and like antagonists and i'll talk a little bit about why i said monsters but i don't really mean monsters um so until then make sure you vote for electric bastion and at the end is if you get time vote for the other stuff you like as well but you know make sure you've got your priorities straight and i will see you all again next week goodbye